Welcome back to No Man's Sky everyone, Jason here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to start a farm, and you can do whatever you want and make millions and millions of units, or just have a lot of materials. Either way, this is how to start a farm. Now the first step on our farming journey is you're going to have to come over to the Space Anomaly, okay? Hit the Space Anomaly because there's some things we need to pick up in the back. So let's head to the back, to the shops, and buy some stuff. Now once you get back to the shop area, there's tons of upgrades you can get back here. But we're going to be focused on our base building because that's where all the farming equipment is. So let's go over to the construction research station right here. Now you can buy a whole bunch of stuff like the base pieces right here. We don't need any of that stuff. We don't need these uh, small prefabs. We don't need the technology per se. I mean, you can't. You can pick up any of the stuff you really want to. Like I would recommend getting a refiner. That way, you can you refine your stuff, but you don't have to. What we're doing is we're, we're setting up the basics for a farm. So let's go all the way over here to the industrial modules, okay? So once you go over to the industrial modules, and you're gonna need salvage data for this. If you don't know how to get salvage data, there's a link up top and down below in the description on a video on how to get your buried technology. That way you could buy all this stuff. But you're gonna wanna get your uh, your electrical tree all filled out, so buy your, your biofuel reactor, I wouldn't recommend using it, but you have to buy it in order to get to the lower end stuff. Or the, I guess, higher end stuff, but it's lower on the tree. Once you've unlocked the reactor, you go to the solar panel and then your electromagnetic generator. And you can also get the battery as well. I would recommend getting all four of those and then come over to your mineral extractor. That's your first industrial power distrib distribution module. But that opens up your tree so you can get the gas extractor, supply depot, and supply pipe. You need all of these if you want to start a really good farm on the outside. I mean, if you just want to farm plants, there's a video I'll link up top and down below on just how to farm plants itself. This is more for mineral farming. Actually, before we do all of that stuff, let's actually go over here to the multi-tool upgrades. Because I totally forgot, we're going to need an upgrade for your multi-tool. So let's talk to the multi-tool expert over here. And this survey device right here, you want to pick that up while you're here. All the other upgrades I would suggest getting, especially for the weapons. But you definitely want to get the survey device. This is how you're going to find the minerals on the ground. So pick that up before you leave. Almost forgot about that. So let's keep moving on. Now, once you're in space, find a good system you want to go to, okay? It doesn't matter what system, because the planets that populate there are going to be a little bit more randomized, and so I would just choose a system that has a lot of different planets. That way you have the highest chance of having a different variety, and so you can go to different areas and start little farms on every one of them. But, in order to find out what it has, let's scan this one. So let's scan this one right here. And then you'll get an information box that pops up. So I know it's a rainy planet, which means it's really good. I don't have to have any environmental protections there. And it has all the all the major materials listed below that. So it has star bulbs, copper, paraffinium, silver. And at the bottom, it tells me it has high sentinel activity. So sentinels are going to be watching me like cops over there. But if I wanted to make a, a silver mine, that's a planet to go to. And you can do that with all the planets in your system. That way you can know, okay, that's my silver planet right there. Let's get to this one. This is an unknown planet. Let's scan it again. And so, yeah, we know this is a, a hot planet because it's charred. So it has selenium, copper, phosphorus, and magnetized ferrite. All right. And so go through and find whatever material you want to go for. I would suggest going for the metals. And so you want to go for cadmium, emerald, or indium because those have the highest resell value. If you're gonna make a farm for profit, that's what you wanna do. But if you wanna make a farm for copper or uh, things like that in order to make uh, materials you need, go for that too. Whatever kind of farm you're looking for, 
that's where you're gonna build it. So this one, it has copper, rusted metal, cobalt. Okay, so yeah, and then we have a planet way out there. Let's see, and if you can't get to a planet, go over, you know, press down on your D-pad, go all the way to the left of the gear, and then go to switch starship view, because sometimes you need to be in first person for the uh, targeting to work. So there you go, now it works. That's a uh, gamma planet, so it's a radioactive planet. It has activated copper, uranium, sodium. So those are the elements that are going to show up when you go after that uh, that planet. So this is the planet I've picked because it's a nice planet. And this one has star bulbs, copper, paraffinium, and magnetized ferrite. I picked it, number one, because it has nice atmosphere. So there's not really bad weather on it. It's a flourishing planet. And it has magnetized ferrite, and I like magnetized ferrite. You can use it for refuel on your uh, terrain manipulator. You can resell it for a good price, too, so why not? So let's head down there, and I will show you how to start your farm. Well, I've landed on the planet. Now, what do we do next? Well, if you're looking for a specific thing, like I'm looking for magnetized ferrite. That's what kind of mine I want to make. So, I'm going to pull out my uh, analyzer, and at, at the bottom you see how it says activate survey mode. Because I have my survey tool installed right here, survey devices installed, ready to go. And so, when I pull up my visor, I can actually search over, and look at that, it changes color so you know which one you're using. And it instantly tries to find a hotspot. And you see I have an electromagnetic power hotspot right over here. And it kind of shows you the direction of where it is. And it's about 296 meters that way. Or, I'm uh, sorry, not meters, units. It's 20, 264 uh, steps over here, I'm guessing. <laughs> and so let's go over and try to find it. So I go that far. I know it's 200, so I have to go for a long distance. Oh, but I'm still, I'm getting closer. So let's keep going. It's over here somewhere. Getting closer. And I always go for power first. That way I don't have to make a solar array. You could totally make a solar array. That way you have power. But I find that if you have an electromagnetic hotspot, you can have unlimited power. So I always look for power first. That would be my tip to you. Look for a good power source. It doesn't have to be an S class or an A class. I mean, those are preferable. You definitely want to try to find those. But if you can't, that's totally fine. And this is what this is where the, a lot of your time is going to be spent looking for these hot spots because you want to find a good one. And so here it is, boom. Okay, we found it. So we're analyzing it. So there you go, boom. We know where this power. This right here is our power area, and it's marked. So now I can see it's right there, and it is right there, boom. So if you get a far enough away, it'll still keep it marked for you. So you can kind of have a reminder. Okay, it is over here. It is you know 31 units away. And that is important because the farther away you get from the center of the hotspot, the less power, or, you know, in this case, power, but if you have a mineral, the less minerals you will get out of it because you're not, you're not close to the center. And so if you see if I go over here, you see over there on the left side, I have an electromagnetic hotspot, and it gives you all the information. I get a potential B, so it's a B-class hotspot, and I can produce a field strength, 22,000 power. But if I keep moving this way, it goes down, 21,999. And if I just keep moving, I'm going down farther and farther. So the farther away you get, the less power I can make. So that's a problem. You can't go too far away from your power source without losing it. But that's okay. You don't have to make it exactly on there. You can kind of get a, an area for it. But we're not here to farm power. We're here to farm an element. So let's, get, let's find a magnetized ferrite deposit and the way you do that is I know my my power is over here so I'm gonna go in a big circle around it to see if there's any good minerals around any mineral deposits I can find and the way you do that is you pull up your your visor every once in a while and it sees I'm still closer to the power hotspot and so it'll only show me the power hotspot but once you get far enough away from it it'll try to find the other closest uh, hotspot to you up oh, there you go so there's my mineral deposit. It's going to show it to me. But if I walk a little bit this way, it'll show right on the edge of it. Now it switched over to my electromagnetic hotspot. 
And so whichever hot spot you're closer to, it'll instantly switch to that one. And so let's walk away a little bit, and it should switch. Boom, boom, boom. Get over this. Yeah, there you go. Boom. There's the switching point. And so now I'm closer to the deep level mineral deposit right over there. And as you can see, again, use your, uh, your little meters on the front of you. So I know it's in front of me because both of them are meeting. If, I'm, if I turn over this way, notice how it says it's only on the left. So you, that's the direction you're going. So move it to the left a little bit. And there you go. So it's around here somewhere. It's about 300 meters that way. I keep using meters. 300 units over there. I keep using meters. I don't know why because I think units means money and, and meters means distance in my mind. Anyway, so you just keep popping it up. I know it's 300, so I'm not very close to it. It might take me a second to get there, but I'm going to pull up my, uh, my analyzer. Okay. It's over here, so I'm getting closer. Oh, getting really close. Now, when you get really close, you start having to move a little bit more because it needs to be exact. So, yeah, you see how I'm moving? And once you get within, like, 30 or 40 uh, units away, that's when I'll just keep it up constantly. That way you can get right up in there because you need to be like one or two meters away, or units away. Analyzing it. And now I have a B-level magnetized ferrite deposit. You see how over there on the left? Now, this is the hard part because you will run into a whole bunch of different mineral deposits. It'll be paraffinium, all the, all the possible ones. Like here, if I put up and go into binocular mode, I can find a copper and a paraffinium and a magnetized mineral deposit. So, it's, it might take you a while to find the deposit you're specifically looking for. If you couldn't tell, I cheated a little bit. And I spent the first couple hours before recording looking for this. And it was a couple hours. Because I found a whole bunch of electrical deposits, hot spots, that didn't have any minerals around them. And I'm like, what in the world? And I finally found this one. It was a B-level uh, hot spot, electrical spot, with a B-level uh, mineral deposit. And so... That's where you're going to spend most of your time, is looking for the deposits, okay? So be ready for that. It's going to be hard, but once you do it, it's cool and it's easy. We're going back over to the um, anal analysis, the survey mode. And so we know this deposit is right here, but we have an el electrical one. And see, we, we marked it before. It is 600 meters that way. And so that's a long distance. And so I don't think you can, like, put a plate base here. And then stretch it all the way over there. That's too far. So you want to meet somewhere in the middle. And so because we have them both marked, we can tell, okay, this one's 600 that direction. And my mineral is 48. So I definitely need to split the difference. So let's go towards the middle. And again, I cheated a little bit. I already placed my, uh, my base computer right over there. <laughs> because that's generally where the middle is. And you don't have to be exact. Like, it doesn't need to be perfectly in the middle. But I find it's easier to build that way if it is in the middle. That way you don't have to go farther in one direction versus the other. So I would always place my, my base computer somewhere in the middle. I mean, you want to find a good spot as well. Like I tried to pick a good flat area right here. So this is where I'm going to put my base because if I go back into survey mode, my electromagnetic power hotspot is 338 that direction. And my mineral deposit is 318 that direction. So we're pretty close to the middle. That way I can pla place my, uh, my base computer. And you need to do that in order to place any farming equipment you want. In order to place it because it counts as a base component. So you're going to need to do that, okay? But boom. Okay, so there you go. Base computer set. So first thing we're going to need to do is we need to make some power. So let's go make some power. So there's my hot spot right there. And so I can put any of my electromagnetic uh, generators around here and I can make some power. The, the only issue is they need to be on the ground. You can't make a flat platform and put them there. At least as far as I know. So let's try that out real fast. So let's make... Um... Oh, I'm too far away from my base. Okay. So I'm too far away from my base. There we go. Boom. So, let's pop it right over here. Let's go out into third person or into uh, free camera. So, if you don't know how to do that, once you pick, once you're, like, right now my camera is locked to my character. But, once I start trying to choose a different, uh, a base piece, you can click in your left thumbstick and it goes into free camera. So, I have a free camera 
within reason. There are certain limits. You can't go too far away from your body when you do this. Like right now, I'm hitting the uh, the limits of it. And you'll see a white uh, circle appear on me. Oh, the circle doesn't appear. Awesome. But, I mean, you can sell, tell because I can't go any farther. Like, I can't back up any farther than that. And so that's the limits. So let's build a base piece right here. And we're not going to build a wall. We want to make a flat area. So let's build a floor panel. Oh, not right there, but boom, right there. So there you go. Boom. And now we can put our... Uh, our electromagnetic generator, right? So let's go over to power. And let's do an electromagnetic generator. So let's pop it right there. Boom. Now it should be making power because I'm on the electromagnetic area, right? Hot spot. Oh, it looks like it is. Oh, man. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, well, that makes it easier then. Well, let's make it, you know, flat. And pop it there. So there, there you go. I didn't realize that. So let's make a couple of these. Because it's making us, it's building, you know, free electricity, so why not? Let's make a few of them. And look at over in the, on, the, on the right side, you see it takes two metal plating, 60 magnetized ferrite, and 75 chromatic metal. And that's for each one. So make sure you have your materials before you show up, or else it's going to be a pain in the butt. It's like I need more chromatic, or I need more uh, metal plating, so I want to make two more real fast. One and two. Because I want to make four of these generators. And the, the best part about these generator, generators is that they go 24-7. As long as they're still there, you're good to go. So let's see. Are all these powered up? Yeah, they're all making 200 power per hour. Or p power per second. So that's what? 200? That's 900 power right there. But they're just making it. They're not doing anything with it. So... We need to actually connect these with wiring, so let's start connecting them. And you can see these little lightning bolts, those are connecting points. And so you want to connect one to the other. So now they're sharing power between each other, which, you know, okay, whatever. But I want to be able to power my base. So let's power them all together. Let's wire them all together so they're all sharing the power. So now they're all on the same power source. So now... I should be making a ton of power, but it's not going anywhere still. So let's grab one of these. You know, we'll grab it from right here. This one. Boom. And let's grab this wire, and we can stretch this all the way out. We're going towards our uh, our mine that's going to be way over there, but we need to get to our base first. So, and you can always do this to make it cleaner. You can just go underground. I'm just doing it quick and dirty right now, so... You could do this way better, however you want to do it. I'm just doing it quick and dirty. So, boom. I have this huge wire stretching out. And what I use, what I like to do, my general trick, because eventually the power won't reach your base. So, when I get to the first one, I want to make a battery. You don't need a battery because those uh, electromagnetic generators are always constantly making electricity. But I feel like the, the battery extends the distance you can stretch out your wire. And so I'll connect this one to my battery. So boom, now my battery is there. And now you can check and see how much power you're making because it's all part of the same system. There you go, boom, it's storing power. So I'm generating 880 power per second. And a battery can hold 45,000 power. So take that in consideration when you're putting your a solar array together. Each battery can hold 45,000 power. And so whatever your, uh, your power system takes, whatever it uses, that's what you're going to need. So just think of that in your head. But for this scenario, we don't need it. I'm just using it to extend my, uh, my power cord, my electrical wiring. And yeah, this is just quick and, you know, down and dirty, so the wiring looks terrible. You can always take the time and go through and make it look, you know, svelte and nice underground. 
And there's no limit to how many joints you can have. Like, I have a joint right there, and it goes up to the battery. You can make a hundred of them. As long as they're all connected, you're good to go. And so you can always hide these wires. It needs to be touching the ground. You can't put a wire out in the middle of the air. You see that? How it turns red? That means it's, you can't do that. It's invalid. It has to be touching the ground. Or a building. Like, if you have a building, it can touch the building, but it has to be touching something. You can't just put a wire out in the middle of the air. That's why I'm touching the ground and then going. Boom. Man, this is... Whoa, what the... My, did my computer just punch me in the face? What is going on with that? All right. So I'm pretty close to my hotspot, so let's start building some mineral extractors. Because I need to, to have that so I can extract some minerals. Now, these for sure I know need to be on the ground. And so my hotspot is... Whoa, wait a minute, where did I, did I lose it? Oh, there it is, it's right there. So this is the center of my hotspot. So what I try to do is I'll go down... Oh no, I'm too far out, I'm right there at the limits of my building. My, uh, my base building. There it is right there. Boom. So, make sure to build wherever you can within your limits. But that's why we have it set like that. That way we can build all the way out here. So, but, my mineral deposit's way up there, but I don't want to do this. So, I want to make sure. Whoop. Because your base needs, your uh, mineral extractors need to be touching the dirt. They need to be touching where the uh, the minerals are. I know for a fact you can't build on these, and I'll show you in a second. So, boom. I have that set, right? So, let's go down, and we go over to our tech. And we'll go over to our power and industry. Industry, not industry. Industry. And our industrial, we're going to take a mineral extractor. Boom. Oh, I need five metal plating, so let's do that real fast. I have a, Thankfully, I have a whole bunch of ferrite dust. So, boom. And this is what you would do when you're trying to build it. You're going to need a lot of metal plating, so be prepared for that. What I usually do is I'll go to the space station and buy them. But yeah, look at that. It won't let me do it. Literally right there and then move it over. It has to be touching the ground. So, I will use the... Uh, the platforms to flatten the area. That way you can kind of get all of your mineral extractors to be on the same level. But they need you need to get rid of your platforms because they won't work with your mineral extractors. They need to be on the ground. So we're going to pop that one there. And I'll usually put one right next to it. Boom. So there we go. But they're not working. They need power. That's why we stretched our uh, electrical wiring all the way over here. So let's get that power cord. And we're going to hook them up. So boom. We hooked up that one. But that one's being powered. This one's not being powered. So you have to share the power. So that's why I put them next to each other. Boom. Now they're both running. Awesome. Awesome possum. But they're extracting. And you can come over here. And you can pick them up. So yeah. I can make, I'm making 500 per hour. But I can only store 250. So what's going on here? I can't store anything. And that's for each one. So each one can only store 250. And it makes 500 an hour. So every 30 minutes it will make one. But the best part about that is if you're in your tech again, go over to your supply pipe. So let's connect both of these extractors together. Now they're sharing. They're pooling their resources. So let's check it again. Now they're making 1,000 per hour and they can store 500. So it just doubled it. Because now instead of going to each one and trying to, to take away from both of them, they all share their storage and their capacity and their, their uh, mineral extraction. And so there you go. Boom. But the better part about that is you can make something called a supply depot. Oh, I need 10 metal plating for that. 
let's make that real fast. So here we go. I, I have my uh, supply depot right here. And this is basically just a gigantic storage container. And the best part about it is... It says it needs power. I think that's a glitch because you don't need to put any power on this thing. Because look at this. If you just supply, you you need to connect it. So we're going to connect the supply all the way over here. Boom. So now there's a tube feeding into our supply depot. So now our extractors, they're making 1,000. But our supply, our overall storage is 1,500. So every storage, every supply depot gives you 1,000 extra storage. And so you can make a ton of these. That way, it doesn't fill up every few minutes. If you make a ton of these, you can come back like once a day and just pick up all your, your materials and then leave. So right now, it'll take about an hour in order to fill that up. And you see, I don't need to power it at all. And the better part about that, to prove that to you, let's, let's actually power it. So let's pick, take this one right here. And stretch it out. Let's plug it in. Nothing. Doesn't make a difference. So, I don't know if they're going to update it to where you need to power your supply depot. I don't know. But right now, you don't need to. So, it works without the power. Don't don't power them up unless you really want to. You can, you can take the time to do it. They don't use any power. You're good to go. So, those are the basics on how to build a farm. And so, every once in a while, I can come over here. And just grab my materials when it's uh, done. So it'll take about an hour to fill up my my storage. Every hour I can come back and pick up all my materials and leave. And if I make more uh, supply depots, it'll take even longer. And so I can come back like every four hours. Or however long you want to take it. So that's why I always make more supply depots than I have mineral extractors. That way I don't have to come back. I don't have to be constantly checking in. I can come back once a day. And the better part about that is this timer... This hour and 26 minutes right here, this is real time. So if I save and shut the game off right now, in an hour and 26 minutes, I can come back, turn the game back on, reload my save, and it will be full. You don't have to keep playing. So this timer continues on no matter what. So hopefully you guys like the basics of farming. If you did, hit that like button for me. And if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading videos all the time, and I will see you guys next time.